go. Let's go. Good morning, guys. Today we're in Stewart, Florida, going offshore fishing with a charter captain friend of ours. I'm not sure what we're going to get into. Maybe cobias and bottom fishing, maybe even some deep dropping. Just got uh, to see. Yeah, we're just going to see. We got a light west wind the last two days, not a ton of current. So we're going to be dealing with those conditions, but uh, walking down to the boat. So let's get going. I'm not shaking your hands. Social distancing. We have made it to the first spot, guys, and it's a beautiful day out here. We're actually just outside the inlet a little bit. We're at the first snapper hole. We're gonna drop down a line here and hopefully get some fish in the boat real quick. But as you can see, I've got a chicken rig that I'm using today. I've got a three ounce sinker, and then about, this is 30 pound mono, and then you can see my two little dropper loops, and we got some nice live shrimp on there with the tails pinched off so they don't spin on the way down. And you can see this beautiful custom rod that's from Cut Salty Day's Fishing Adventures. We're gonna drop this straight down, see if we can get on some fish here first thing in the morning. But it is gorgeous out here. Super blessed to be following our dreams and we're gonna be getting on some fish today. I have a good feeling. So, so now it's down there and I'm just gonna kind of like let it sit, raise it off the bottom a little bit and hopefully we get some snapper, some kind of fish here real soon. At least we got current. Got him. We got one. Go. Hooked up. Coming in. First fish. See what we got. Feels pretty decent. Color. Color, color, color. We got two. You got a sandwich. Oops, sorry. Hit the weight. All right, so we got a lane snapper and we got a nice grunt. Yep. Sweet. So Legal size, eight inches. Yeah. This is great eating fish. Yeah. I only keep him if they're ten, if they're at least ten inches. Ten. Yeah. So we'll let him go. Yeah, no, he's good. He's we'll good. Make a sandwich. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Fish on the boat. So, Sweet. Oh, good job, Captain. Put us on the go. <laughs> We're getting grouper baits. Grouper baits. Look at the size of this fish. Slay session. It's huge. <laughs> <laughs> And we got, oh, I'm, got I'm the queen of grunts. <laughs> You're the queen, grunt queen. I'm the grunt queen, literally. <laughs> it's all good though. I'm catching fish, yeah. having fun. Got him. Yeah. That feels nice. Get up here. A lane. I'll take it. Nice. Sandwiches. Yeah. Finally, you got something a little different than my grunt. But we got dinner. <laughs> Come on. Digging. Digging, baby. AJ. Probably. Nice. Hooked up, y'all. Out here with Salty Days Fishing Adventures. And if you want to come out here and do this too, I'm going to link all of Captain Rich information down below for you guys to check it out. But we are on the fish. Feels like a nice one, too. It's coming up. Just crushed a live thread fin. Woo, can feel those head shakes. Get up here. Here we go, color. Color. It is an agent. Yeah, I'll take it. Dude. Oh, those... oh yeah. Banded rudder fish. Check that out. Looks like a AJ, but it's not. It's a banded rudder fish. That's a big one. Gee whiz. Nice. All right, broke off that skunk, even though I did catch a couple fish earlier. I would say this is breaking off the skunk. Nice fight. Very edible too, guys. That's awesome. Nice. All right, we're gonna put them away. And we're gonna get some more of the fish right now. Yeah, we'll get them up, the sharks. Fish coming in. <laughs> I was wondering if you're gonna say anything. Sorry. I slow down. You can like fly and throw them over, over the top of the boat. Trying to do rate. that. <laughs> Trying to do that. 
Why? I lost my weight or something. Oh, oh my God. God. What is it? Oh my God! What is that? Like that? What is that? Dude! What the heck? What the heck? Fish. It's a giant bluefish! No way! Shark! 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 Oh, there's another one underneath him. Look at that. Wow, y'all, that's pretty wild. So, sorry I didn't talk. I literally was just cranking as fast as I possibly could to get this fish away from the sharks. That is going to be my biggest Florida bluefish right there. I don't know if it's bigger than that crap. one from the lagoon. So. You don't think so? No. Captain Rich putting us on the fish today. Mm -hmm. Heck yeah. Look at that guy, yellow eyed demon right there. That's probably the size you guys up north are much more used to catching. I'm used to catching baby ones, like, you know, little cocktails and stuff. But that is a yellow eyed demon. Started jumping way out there. I didn't know what the heck it was. I've never caught one this big, no, I'm spinning, this big deep sea fishing, which is pretty wild. Pretty cool, but maybe we're gonna use them for shark bait and get on another fish. Dolphin, I think I see a baby. Hold on. They get a squid out there too. It's just like that. Just like that. It's a nice fish. That's a nice fish. Get your bait out. Get your bait. My bait's out. My bait's out. Thank you. My bait's out. My bait's out. The bait might be too big for that size. I don't know. I mean, the one that I saw. I'll do it. Throw a squid. Get a squid out there. Eat it, baby. Eat it, baby. They're on it. Yeah, there you go, Darcy. Just let them eat it for a second. Got him. No, no, no. No. They're too big. Got a squid. Got to cut it in half quickly, quickly before they're gone. Before they're gone, they broke it right off. It's too big. Yes, heck yeah. Hook them, Cody. Yeah, we need smaller baits. Smaller baits, cut. Smaller bait, cut bait, yeah, cut bait. We just found something, something floating right here. We got a ton of bait. I'm hooking up, trying to hook a fish right now. See if he stays hooked here. Maybe we need smaller hooks. I don't know. Yep, just pulled again. They're swimming with our bait. We got mahi all in this area. We're trying to hook them, throwing live baits at them, throwing dead baits at them like dead squid. They are eating it every single time, but they are just not getting hooked. I don't know what's going on here, and I don't know where they went. Looks like they're on the move, going to the north. But we got into some mahi. We just can't get one in the boat, and they're biting. What the heck? Yeah, baby! Stay hooked, stay hooked, stay hooked. That's a nice fish. Stay hooked. We got a mahi on, y'all. We got a mahi. Praying to God we get this fish to the boat. But it's not caught yet. So we got a mylar uh, dredge out. As you can see, we just pulled that up. And that just attracted all the mahi to the boat, which is pretty sick. Uh, Cody, first mate Cody, spotted the school of mahi behind the boat. And I just, we had live baits out trolling them. And I let him eat it for a while this time, and it worked. He is hooked. Fish is coming in. I see him. Color. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Yes, we did it. I did not think that was going to happen. Yeah, I'm so go. happy! Woo. We went back and did it again. Heck yeah! Captain Rich putting us on the Pelagics too. This beautiful Mahi Mahi. Look at that gorgeous cow. Perfect gaff shot. That's not raking leaves. All right, y'all, we have officially made it back to the dock. And I just want to say big shout out to first mate Cody. He did a superb job today on the boat and he whooped that fish's butt, the other, what broke off at the end there. But we had an epic day on the water, y'all. We hooked into so many fish. We went way offshore. And if you guys want to come out here and do this out of Stewart too, Captain Rich is your man. Check him out, Salty Days Fishing Adventures. And I'll link all his information down below. Check out his YouTube channel. He's got some awesome videos, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. He will put you on whatever you want to catch. If you want to go for a meat trip, if you want to catch sailfish, cobia, whatever it is, Captain Rich is your man. I'm hooking them up with some 2020 Dar Sizzle calendars. So I'm giving this to Thank Captain you. Rich. You're welcome. Actually, the new stickers, by the way, of which I've been mentioning, are available on the website. Hooking them up with stickers as well. And 
I just gave them their lucky fishing bracelets. They're already wearing them. They picked oh, yeah. out which ones they want. So you're interested in those too. I hand make each individual one myself. Adult and kid sizes available. So check it out, y'all, down in the description below. Time to fillet up our fish, y'all. We're back at the house, and it's actually the next day. Lately, we've been having like very, very long fishing days out there to get the job done. And Captain Rich, you know, we stayed out as long as we possibly could to get on some fish. And at least we got ourselves dinner. That's what counts. And also another good thing too, I like to do at least, to trick with keeping fish cold and filleting them is I really like to keep them in the cooler for at least like a good three to four hours, if not overnight. Overnight would be best because that fish gets nice and firm. And it's just gonna be that much easier for you to fillet that fish. Um, so as long as you just bury them in the ice and let them really soak down and get you know nice and cold, it's gonna be good to go. But actually look at this right here. I actually see something sticking out of his stomach right now. So we're gonna open that up and see what the heck that is. So I'm gonna fillet this fish and then we're gonna find out what's in the belly of this mahi. So let's do this. And that grizzly cooler, by the way, keeps these fish nice and cold for me. So just make a cut right here, angle the, the, the knife up toward the head because there's a ton of head meat that people miss all the time. Then just angle it back down, one long stroke. And just, I can feel the contact, you know, the backbone right there that I'm contacting the whole entire time. You go right through. You really want a sharp knife when you're filleting fish. It's gonna be that much easier for you. Nice long strokes. Beautiful fish. I'm really excited for more offshore fishing. And if you guys know anything about South Florida, it literally has been the windiest winter of ever that I could ever remember. So it was finally beautiful for us to go offshore and it was flat calm conditions and I'm so excited for the next month or two, you know, beginning of April, May is really when the mahi should start pushing in and hopefully we're gonna get on some more of these bad boys. But they get huge, they get massive. People catch 50 pounders, 40 pounders regularly. I have yet to catch like a monster in quite a few years, at least locally in our home waters. So I'm looking forward to getting back out there after these mahi. So much fun chasing these things. And then we just go over the rib cage bones here. And most fish, I always talk about these pin bones. Most fish have pin bones. And you can see all that row. This fish is totally full of row. They have pin bones that extend from the backbone right here that, sit, that extend sideways out of the fish right here. So that's what I'm talking about is pin bones because they come out sideways and that's how they're in the meat right there. But most fish that I fillet always have pin bones. So now we got that beautiful side off. Let's go ahead and skin it. And I know a lot of you guys are gonna tell me right now to just rip that skin off and it's good to go. Personally, I do not like to do that. Reason being is because it leaves some kind of like crisscross membrane on it. And I could show you on the other side by ripping it to show you what I'm talking about, but I don't like the way that tastes. I just don't like that, that texture in my mouth. So I prefer to do this. Either way works. Do whatever works for you, but this is what I like to do, and I appreciate the the uh, the <laughs> the options that you guys give me. But this is how I like to fillet fish. All right, now we got that off. Boom, done. Fold it up, get it out of the way. And then last but not least, let's just remove that bloodline, which is not a big deal at all. It's a fairly easy fish to fillet. Just again, you really need a sharp knife to get it done. Get it done nice and beautifully. Now we got beautiful mahi-mahi steaks. I'm so excited for what cooking with pudding is gonna cook for us. Not exactly sure. I'm just gonna leave that a surprise for both of us because I have no idea. Just get the rest of that bloodline off, no big deal. And when I just took out that bloodline, it also took out those pin bones. So you can see there, there is our beautiful mahi filet. Let's knock this off real quick. And I got all that extra head meat as well, right here on this part of the head. You got extra meat there, so. Always try to get as close to the head as you possibly can on fish. And just gonna make some cuts right here. And there we go. You got our beautiful mahi-mahi steaks. I'm gonna finish up the other side of this fish. And anything that I'm using right here in this video, or right here flaying these fish, by the way, and everything that we talk about is down in the description below. So if you're interested, go ahead and check it out. But let's go ahead and finish up the other side. I almost forgot, y'all. I wanna show you what was inside the belly. Completely forgot, but Brian, AKA put in, but just reminded me. There's our fish, just filleted up the other side of it beautiful mahi-mahi fillets. And if you remember, we caught this fish trolling. So we had bump trolling, live baits. We had a live bait out, saw the fish eat it, actually felt it eat it, and I let him run with it. So he probably has my live bait in there, but we're just gonna see, cause you never know. I like to do this, cause I'm weird and I like to dissect fish. All right, so here we go. So you saw all that row, and this is the belly. I was totally right, it's full of fish. Let's check it out, see what he's got in there. 
<laughs> that is a full fish. These are one of the fastest growing fish in the ocean, so they eat like insane amounts of food. It's insane. They grow really, really quick. Holy cow, it is our bait. I knew it. He's got two of them in there, but look at that real quick. That also gives you another, I guess, uh, tip about fishing and what, how, how, when it comes to mahi and how they eat their bait, they always eat them head first. So when you're trolling ballyhoo, when you're trolling anything, they come up instead of whacking off the tail or eating it at the tail like sailfish and wahoo and kingfish do and cut it in half, they eat it head first. So you can see how both those heads are straight in like that. Just come, you know, so it's pretty cool. Just a little tip there. So there's one live thread fin, well, dead thread fin now. And there is another thread fin. And you can see there it's got two cuts right by the uh, tail section there. I don't know if the mahi did that. I'm assuming it did. Pretty crazy. So he stole one of our baits and then he got hooked on the other bait. Pretty wild. And that was all that was in there. Two giant thread fins. Pretty crazy. That was a very, very hungry fish, y'all. And this portion right here this is also known as a mahi belly. This is excellent mutton snapper bottom fishing bait. So I like to cut it off and I'm going to save that piece. And then the rest, I know you're going to say, why aren't we eating the head and the guts and the, the bones and everything else? It's going to go in my stone crab trap. All right, let's go in the house. Another great job playing as Mahi Mahi Dressizzle. And welcome guys to another edition of Cooking with Pudding. Now I'm keeping it a secret, but what I'm going to cook today is Party B's, that's my other name, or Pudding's famous and favorite sauce. The sauce is delicious. It's basically a, a cream and butter sauce. It's so good. We've done it before and we're going to get right into it. Uh, we're going to have some broccoli with it. I'm going to put that right in the oven. That's not broccoli. This is not broccoli, this is asparagus. You guys are so silly, so we've got some asparagus. And uh, I'm gonna get to cooking, I'm gonna talk about a couple things. This is onion, I'm gonna put it in a pan with some olive oil. All right, now while that's going, I wanna talk about, we got some new patrons. I wanna run by them real quick. Thank you so much to all the patrons. And guys, don't forget, third Wednesday of the month is the live stream. And if you wanna be on the live stream, you gotta be a patron. We got Michael D, Keith C, Chris H, Jack R, Robert H, Edward P, Randall, and Michael W. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, and the other thing is, is the fish angle wrap. I better keep on top of my thing so I don't burn stuff again. Darcy yells. It's the Fish Angler Catch 2020. Actually, hashtag Catch 2020. We're going to put all the rules and all that kind of stuff down in the description of this video below. But uh, you guys can post up some catches on the Fish Angle wrap. Hashtag 2020 in the description. And then everyone is like an entry to win. That, that's the gist of it, all right? So get right into that. Uh, all right, so we're cooking this mahi. Very exciting. Uh, when I bring the mahi in, it's getting right to the cooking. You know, I just clean it, up, clean it up a little bit. I got some salt and pepper on here, and we're all set to go. We're going to get this uh, softened up, and we'll get on to the next step. All right, guys, now these onions are just kind of softening up a little bit. You can see I have all my ingredients down here. I got my garlic and my wine and my cream and my butter. I'm going to put that garlic in. Again, we're just gonna soften this up a little bit. So about three to four minutes on the medium heat. All right, that looks like it's doing pretty good. You can see a little browning there. We don't wanna brown it too much. Next ingredient is some wine, which we're gonna reduce by 20 by 50%. And only the best wine for Darcizzle, of course. And how much we put in here? I am totally just kind of making it up, but I base it on how much I wanna make. And it's basically, uh, Put he the main ingredients are butter and heavy cream. So I usually just judge it on that and you can do equal parts of that. I'm gonna make two cups of sauce, so I'm gonna make two cups of butter, I mean one cup of butter and one cup of heavy cream. And if I like it more whiny or tart, I'm gonna put a little extra wine in there. We're gonna let this reduce so it gets down to about 50%. See you in a second. All right, that seems to be reduced pretty well. At this point, I'm gonna add my cup of cream and my cup of butter. Now I'm gonna let this come to a pretty good boil, stirring a lot two or three times until it's done. And at the same time, this is when I get started with the fish. Of course, I'm using your fancy pan, that my nice cast iron skillet you guys sent me. Thank you very much. I got it down to three so I don't burn anything. I'm also today using uh, olive oil for the, for the cooking. I usually use butter, but these pieces were a little thicker and also I wanna get a little crunch or a little texture on this fish. So I'm gonna cook it a little bit higher heat because this sauce really goes good 
when you have like a, you know, with the texture of, of the fish when it's crunchy. And the best thing to do is to bread this fish We'll put some sort of light flour coating on it and then with that sauce on there, and we love it with asparagus like we showed you, it really just comes out phenomenal. But of course, I'm too fat for all that, so I'm just gonna make it slightly crunchy with some little crunchy edges with a little bit higher heat with the olive oil. So uh, as we always tell you, it's 10 minutes an inch. Come take a look at this sizzle, get in here. It's 10 minutes an inch about. We're gonna let this cook three, four minutes. I'm gonna have a little too much oil in there, no big deal. And we're gonna flip it and uh, we'll be almost ready. This over here is not quite boiling yet. We'll get there. No rush on that. That's cooking with pudding is always a little messy. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong getting a little on you. All right, guys, just clean up a little bit real quick. I'm gonna flip this fish so Dasha doesn't get melt, yell at us. She doesn't appreciate cooking with pushing, cooking with pudding as much as we do. <laughs> but you can see the fish. Take a look, sizzle. You see that white on the edges? Don't get so close. You're gonna get that on the lens. It's so close. The white on the edges is coming over. Coming over. It's time to flip. All right, oh, you better use a spatula. And I'm gonna keep the thick parts in the middle. And you can see over here, I took this off the, off the stove because it boiled a couple times and this is gonna cool down a little bit and thicken. It's gonna be delicious. Some of these are done. What I do is I test it with a fork. Of course, you can cut them in half, but I test them with a fork and if it goes all the way through, they're good. And you're gonna take these off you don't want to overcook fish. You're going to take these off as they become done. The skinnier pieces are going to come off first, and the thick ones are going to come off last. And in a couple minutes, whoop, we're going to show you how to make a delicious plate. It's ready, y'all. Time to get it out. Well, actually, the asparagus is ready, huh? It's so good. I don't know why asparagus goes so well with this particular meal. It works great with any fish. We cook fish, you know, like Brian did, a mahi, grouper, snapper. It doesn't really matter what. So since Brian didn't use his fish spatula, I'm going to use his fish spatula. Take them off. Prepare my plates. I like to pre-cut it. Like so. Like so. And then last but not least, the delicious sauce. I need a spoon. There was a spoon in there. Oh, there it is. It's hidden. It's hidden. That's cooking mind. with pudding. There you go. Oh, yeah. Let's see it. Oh, that looks good, Sizzle. Oh, yeah. Full of garlic and onions, my freaking favorite. I'm obsessed with onions. I'm obsessed with garlic. I love Lowry's garlic salt. I used that my whole life growing up. This is the best of both worlds. Put a lot of sauce. Let's go eat. All right, there's sizzle. Let's do it. I'm so excited. This is our this is our, like one of our favorite meals ever. Yes, not that healthy. We know, we know. We need to get back on track. Healthy meals. I need to get back on track. Healthy meals. There's we no had carbs. tacos last night. Yeah, but I have, low, I have low carb things, uh, taco shells. They taste like cardboard. Connor loves this meal too. A taco's a taco. It's pretty damn good. Oh, sorry. It's pretty the freaking language. good. It's pretty freaking good, even with. You don't uh, have the cardboard, no carb, low I'm carb not, shells. Time. I, I'm forced to like eat the help the diet stuff too, and it's good. I like it. In between her ice cream and cookies. Anyway, so this is a great recipe. I also want to mention I was going to talk about it more over there in the kitchen, but people always ask like, how do you cook that fish? You cook, you can cook like most fish the same exact way. Like this recipe right here is fine for any kind of snapper, mahi. Mm -hmm grouper if you want. Mm -hmm. The only distinction, I think, when you want to get to more of the denser fish, like tuna and wahoo, I mean, those are really best as sushi. I mean, you can cook them or bake them and they're gonna be good, but the best thing to do with those fish is to have them as sushi. And then some of the really oily fish, you know, you really just want to make... Pompano. Pompano is delicious, right? You can make this with pompano. Oily. Oh yeah, but I'm talking about oily fish, like kingfish, you're gonna smoke that crap. Um, so that's the gist of it. All right, I'm just over here stuffing my face because it's so amazing, delicious. Y'all have to try this recipe one day. It's really, really good, especially if you're not on a diet. Try it. And uh, so don't forget to enter the Fish Angler app. It's hashtag yes. catch2020. Fish Angler ca hashtag catch2020 contest. And you're going to win three prize packages that they have available. I think the value is way up there. Uh, three different prize packages, you know, first through third. And you basically just pack... You basically just post as many of your catches as possible, and as more you post, additional entries you get. 
and I think it, I believe it's over on April 19th, but I'm going to post all the information down below. Download the Fishing Away app for free, sign up, and then start posting your photos on there, and you will probably be a winner. And wash your hands. Yeah. <laughs> wash your hands. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'm glad that we got to get offshore again. And like we said, we just don't know what's going to go on down here since we're in southeast Florida and you know, we're real close to Miami. And there's not a lot of cases here yet, but, you know, it's just going to get worse from here, it seems like. So, yep. anyhow, y'all stay safe, be smart, be healthy. Thank you so much for watching our videos. Again, we would not be here without you watching. So, you know, as always, we love y'all. So until our next adventure, follow, follow your dreams, dreams and keep, keep on, on catching. catching. And, wash, and wash your hands.